everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm so happy to see you. My name is Julie and I'm one of the musicians in Tackle Music. I play the violin. Now, have you ever seen a violin up close? It looks like that. There's the sides, there's the back, and there's what we call the scroll. On the top, this beautiful thing is called the scroll. The violin is my very favorite instrument. I started violin lessons when I was about four years old. My dad came home from work one day and he said, Julie, would you like to play the violin or the cello? And I'd never heard of a cello before and I thought he said jello. So I started laughing uncontrollably and I said, Dad, you can't play jello. That's ridiculous. I'll play the violin. And I started playing the violin and I think it was love at first sight because I've always loved, love, love, love playing this instrument. The violin is a string instrument. So like a cello or viola or even a guitar, we have strings. These, I've got four strings, one, two, three, four on mine. And since the violin is, since the violin is the smallest of the string family, it plays the highest notes. My lowest note, my lowest string is a G. And then I have a D string, an A string, and the highest string is an E string. And on any of these strings, when I put fingers down and make the string shorter, it, the notes get higher and higher. made out of wood, spruce, often for the tops, and maple for the backs, and other beautiful kinds of wood that are carved into this beautiful violin shape. And the pieces of wood are glued together with a very super, super strong glue. There are no nails in violins, just wood and glue. And the strings are, are held in two places. One is right here in the tailpiece, and then the strings are stretched over top of this little thing called the bridge, and then they go over top of the fingerboard, and all the way up, and each one is attached in the peg box to one of our tuning pegs. And the tuning peg changes the pitch of the instrument, so I, if I stretch it more, it gets higher. And if I tune it down, it gets lower. We have one other special feature of the violin, and that is these holes that are cut into the top of the instrument. And these are special sound holes that let the sound come out of the instrument. Can you guess which letter the violin makers are trying to carve? I'll show you really close. Some people think it looks like a letter S, but it's actually a lowercase f. You can see. Oh, right there, that makes it an F. Now I also have a bow, which looks like this. And this is a Baroque bow. So it's curved this way, more like a bow and arrow bow, and it's got a nice pointy tip. And I play a lot of music from Baroque times, 17th and 18th century. And people at that time loved to dance. And these kind of bows make it perfect for playing really light and lively dance music. Now, the part of the bow that I put my fingers on down here is called the frog. Not a funny name. And this part, of course, is the stick. And the white part is actually hair from a horse's tail. And when the hair on the bow strokes the string, the sound comes out. This violin and I have been best friends since the very first day we met. 
almost 20 years ago. We've gone on so many different adventures all around the world. Can you think of a story that you might like to tell me about your best friend or an adventure that you went on together? That's fantastic, great. A couple of years ago, I took my violin on a very special trip. This violin was made in Amsterdam in the year 1694. Now, do you know what year it is right now? 2020, that's right. So this violin is gonna have its 326th birthday this year. How old are you gonna be on your birthday? Wonderful, great. On this violin's 316th birthday, I took it to Amsterdam, which is where this violin was born. And while I was there, one of my friends took me to the shop of a wonderful luthier. And a luthier is a French word for violin maker. So we went to the luthier's shop and he had a really cool book that had all the addresses of all of the makers who were ever making violins in Amsterdam. And he was able to give me the, the exact address of the shop that Hendrik Jacobs, who's the maker of my violin, lived and worked in 1694. So the next day I took my violin on my walk and we found this address. And it's a beautiful apartment building right beside a canal. So I spent the afternoon imagining what this violin's life must have been like starting out in Amsterdam and how many different violinists have played this violin in 300 in over in almost 400 years and how many concerts this violin has played and how many audience members around the world have heard all of the mu beautiful music that have come out of these beautiful F holes. <laughs> Now let's hear some music. I'm going to play a piece for you by an Italian composer who was living in London at around the same time that my violin was made. Now this composer's name was Nicola Matteis and he was the best violinist in London at that time. Somebody who heard Nicola play said nothing approached the violin in Nicola's hand. He seemed to be inspired and played such ravishing things as astonished us all. This piece has two parts, so I'm gonna need a little bit of help from you to play the first part. The first part of the piece is an old melody called a shakona, and lots of composers used to love this tune and would write their own variations. So I'm gonna play the variations and you are gonna sing the shakona. So the shakona starts on a C. Mm -hmm. Can you find that note? La 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 la. Good. You can clap or hum or sing along. It goes like this. I feel great. I'm full of gladness. I feel great. I'm full of gladness. Can you sing with me? I feel great. I'm full of gladness. I feel great. I'm full of gladness. Wonderful. Now you're going to sing that over and over and over and over and over until I stop playing. Okay. It's a lot of time. So you might get bored of those words. And if you do, you can just add your own words. So you can think of all the things that make you feel great. So you could say, I feel great. I'm full of sunshine. I feel great. I'm full of rainbows. I feel great. I'm full of hot dogs. Anything you love. Okay. Are you ready? My violin ready? Okay. Perfect. Okay, here we go. Here's your part, and just keep repeating it. I feel great. I'm full of gladness. I feel great. I'm full of gladness.
for the whole piece? Did, you, did we end together? Bravo! That's the Italian word for great job. Now, did you like this piece? What did you think? Tell me. Raise your hand if this piece made you feel happy listening to it. Raise your hand if you felt sad. Raise your hand if you felt angry. Raise your hand if you felt sleepy. Hmm. There is no right or wrong answer to this question. Music can make us feel lots of different ways. And sometimes we can feel different ways on different dates. We can experience all different emotions listening to music. I almost always feel joyful when I play this piece. It's one of my favorites. Thank you so much for helping me make beautiful music. Enjoy your day and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Bye for now.